Hi friends, in former times there was high voltage technology fan and I made shockers like on a conveyor line. For me this is in the past, but a lot of people write to me with a request to show the making process of this or that part for the stun gun. There are two types of stun guns based on a high voltage transformer or a voltage multiplier. I have already shown how to assemble a powerful shocker on a multiplier. In the description you can find all the information on stun guns. Today we will make a high voltage coil for a classic stun gun. And in the next videos we will completely assemble device according to a simple circuit but with very good parameters. Well, now let's start winding a high voltage transformer. First, we need to find a ferret core on which the coil will be wound. In my case, it is taken from the magnetic antenna of an old radio. Here I note that the magnetic permeability and core dimensions aren't critical. Once upon a time, I used a package of transformer plates as a core and everything worked perfectly. Next, you need to break the core to the desired size and then insulate. I recommend to find a plastic frame that will fit the core tightly, but since I don't find a frame of a suitable diameter, I just insulated the core with Captain tape. Isolation must be reliable, about 10 layers. Captain tape can be replaced with a regular transparent one. The thicker, the better. Next, we wind the primary winding. Its diameter can vary from 0.8 to 1.2 mm. In my case, it's 1.2 mm. If you have a soft wire and think silicone insulation at hand, then preferable to wind just such a wire. The wire needs to be additionally insulated at the outputs. I use the double heat shrinkable tube as insulation. Above the primary winding, we wind 10 layers of wide adhesive tape. Again, it is advisable to use an adhesive tape of large thickness. Do you want your homemade products to be the same as the factory ones? Then you need high quality printed circuit boards, which PCBWay will produce for you at affordable prices. Just download the source Gerber files from the company's website, select the options you need, pay for the order, and soon your boards will be ready. The complexity, number of layers, and board sizes can be anything. PCBWay often holds contests and sweepstakes. Follow the news to keep track of the events. We were personally convinced of the quality. Try it too. The link is in the description. After that, we proceed to winding the secondary or step-up winding. It's worth paying very great attention to the winding and insulation of this winding, since it is here that a high voltage of tens of thousands of volts is formed. First, we wind the required wire. I advise you to take the wire diameter in the range from 0.15 to 0.2 mm. It is recommended to use a wire from magnetic starters or disc electric meters, since they have good varnish insulation. 
Next, we take such a wire. This is a high voltage flexible wire in silicone insulation. You can buy it on AliExpress. We solder the end of winding wire to it. The place of soldering hidden under a double layer of a heat shrinkable tube. If you don't have such a wire, then any other wire with thick insulation will fit. But it is advisable to additionally insulate the wire with heat shrink. Then we fix the output with scotch tape and start winding. You need to wind as carefully as possible. Try to put each turn next to the other one, without overlaps. This winding is wound in layers. Each layer is about 8 to 85 turns. It is important to observe the distance from the edge of the winding to the edge of the core. On each side it should be at least 5 mm and even better 10. Next, the first row of winding is insulated with tape. The number of tape layers is 5 to 7. Please note that we don't cut the wire, it just goes along with the insulation tape. Next, cut off the tape and continue winding. We wind the second row in the same way. If the first row was wound from left to right, the second will go from right to left and so on to the end. On each row of winding, you must put from 5 to 7 layers of isolation. The total number of turns of the secondary winding is 1000 to 1500. That is, you should get about 13 to 16 layers of 80 to 85 turns each. At the end of the winding, the wire is cut off and the excess adhesive tape on the sides is also cut off. As a result, we get such a thing. We clean the second end of the winding, solder it to the wire and isolate the soldering point. Who is interested? The inductance of the primary winding is about 2.7 microhenry. The secondary winding has a resistance of about 79 ohms and inductance of 46 millihenry. But our Thoman didn't end there. Such a transformer will work, but it is extremely unreliable and a breakdown may occur at any time. So it must be filled with epoxy resin. There are different types of resins. Some dry and 5 minutes, but in our case we need a resin that dries for a long time. To fill the coil you need to find a suitable container. In my case, it is a 60 ml syringe. It is important to have a gap between the coil and the walls of the syringe for reliable filling and free release of air bubbles. Next, we drill holes in the syringe and put out the wires. Then, everything must be carefully sealed. Now you need to align the coal at the center. For this I used pieces of plastic. We mix the resin components according to the instructions. In my case, it is 10 parts of resin and 1 part of hardener. We mix all this thoroughly and pour it into a syringe. Don't recommend it heating off the resin for quick hardening. It is necessary that it dries for a long time so that the air that has accumulated between the layers of insulation comes out.
After pouring, it is advisable to shake and tap it from time to time to help the air escape. The coil will be as hard as glass in about a day, depending on the resin. Here, I will note one thing. The syringe can be removed or you can leave it. Additional insulation will never hurt. As a result, we get a monolithic transformer. It remains only to test it. To do this, I hastily assembled a high voltage converter. The circuit is now in front of you. These discharges are quite impressive. With continuous work for a minute, I didn't notice any oddities. It doesn't break through anywhere. There is no sparking inside the transformer. I stretch the discharge up to 3 cm and everything is fine. Although it is possible up to 5 cm, but I don't advise. After all, the internal insulation has a certain breakdown voltage and at some point the transformer will fail. In general, the most important part of our shoker is ready. In the next video, we will do the rest. So, subscribe to the channel and to our groups to keep up with of things. Please don't forget to rate the videos and share it with your friends. On this, I say goodbye. Until new meetings. With you was Kassian TV.